Hey everyone, got a Pelican case here. Am I going on a trip? No, not this set. Well, I mean, I'm always going on a trip somewhere, but I got some questions recently from people and they were asking me about locking your Pelican case, right? Uh, I've done a lot of talks about this before, about, about travel security. And they said, so these little hasps, is there a particularly special or popular lock that you'd want to use in a situation like this? I mean, yes, the, these kind of hasps, you know, they'll accommodate a padlock, right? But this is kind of got a case of the weeble wobbles and also it's an absolute piece of garbage. I'm actually going to talk about this very specific padlock in a future video. But what do I use when I need to secure something? Well, some of you know about this, right? I mean, first of all, if you don't want to use a little uh, TSA, you know, compatible lock, you need to be able to travel with something worth locking up. So. Sometimes, all right, let's say you're doing that. Let's say you say, okay, I'm going on a trip. I want to really, really protect something I've got in here. So how many of you have seen me before? What is my usual go-to? All right, firearm in the luggage. That is a pretty simple way to entitle yourself to locking up, a, you know, to locking up your bags with a non-TSA lock. Many of you already know that from me. But what do I use? Which non-TSA lock am I going for? Truth be told, most of you know this. I haven't really found a way to beat it yet. It's the Abloys. It's the, the Abloy Protex. Now, this is an interesting point, though. Do you go small or do you go large? In fact, the PL330, it's a little hard to see on there, but PL330, I will tell you, is just about the largest lock that you'll be able to safely accommodate on one of these hasps. It doesn't really have much more wiggle room there. It's, it's not going to go anywhere. This is about as big and beefy as you're going to get on a Pelican case. So you say, all right, solid, done. Two minute video, nice. Get to, the, get to the drawing and the giveaway. I will. But there's a consideration here. A lock this big, first of all, it's got some gravity in it. And you put two of these on your case. Now you're weighing yourself even closer to that you know, luggage overage limit. The other thing, compare what you're affixing it to, right? We talk about what good is a $100 lock and a $10 door. Well, the same kind of rule applies here. If I throw a giant beefy lock like this, I've actually seen baggage throwers not grab the handle, but just kind of wrench on the lock because it's big, it's dangling, it's right there. I've seen these locks bash around on belts and on uh, carousels and actually cause damage and, and rip off. And now you're, you're not only destroying your case, but you're also out the cost of your lock, which is a significantly non-zero number. So if you're not going to use a giant beefy lock, what are you going to use? Many of you know this from my talks and lectures and elsewhere, the little PL321, what I kind of call the, uh, the, the best travel lock in the biz. If I drop a little mini abloy on there like this, now this is again, it's still going to have the same protection against manipulation, any kind of, uh, I know that nobody's picking this open. I know that nobody's shimming this open. So you might ask yourself, well, look, do you, I mean, this is, it's flipping around on there. It's this little rinky dink thing. Can't you cut that with bolt cutters? Yeah, yeah, you totally can cut that with bolt cutters. But that's not exactly my threat model. Again, if I have my gun in the case, my main threat model is someone just kind of quickly popping in there, reaching in, grabbing something and throwing it back. All I care about, for the most part, is a lock that guards against easy and quick, non-obvious attack. If someone obviously attacks us, the most obvious attack being Kerchunk Snipperoo, that's going to be noticeable to me. And it's happened to me. You've, you've seen this on the channel, right? Like I've had problems with cut locks when people have misunderstood the policies surrounding firearms. But I'll know that's happened. The moment I am grabbing this off the belt, I'm going to like, holy shit, something's wrong. My lock's not here. Let me figure this out. Let me respond. Likewise, as long as this is still on there and on the other side, I'm going to do both, when I pick up my luggage at bag claim, I know in my heart no one's been in here. And that's what I'm mostly looking for. There's also these weird edge case scenarios, right? Like when these locks have been cut by TSA or other people who don't understand the scope of their authority, I would honestly prefer to lose a cheaper lock in the process. And also, this is just for me, I want the luggage to still make it to my destination. Because let's say, go ahead 
and have a PL330 on everything because we are big and bad. All right, we got this PL330, big beefy lock. Nobody's cutting that, nobody's getting in here. Let's say some flunky functionary from whomever agency says, huh, I don't understand what's happening and I'm a dummy and I don't know there's a gun in here and I want to get in this and inspect it. Well, they look at this, they try to cut it, they break their bolt cutters, which is satisfying if you've ever seen uh, pictures that we have of locks with clear marks on it, that's great. But then what happens? If the TSA doesn't opt to call me up or to have the airline page me, there's a real possibility that this case is simply not getting turned over to the airline. And it's just gonna sit and wait in my origin city and I'm gonna show up with nothing. So it's a calculated risk, right? What do I ultimately wanna have happen? If there's going to be a failure case, do I want that failure mode to be luggage never arrives? Or do I want that failure mode to be I lose some slightly less expensive lock? It's the calculus we all gotta do. But now, let's say you're not traveling with a firearm. And you're not traveling with a firearm because you're not traveling with anything particularly expensive. Let's say you're just traveling with something that, uh, you know, it's essential, but you don't need to lock up with something like a big old abloy. You still wanna prevent eager fingers from reaching in there and taking stuff that belongs to you. So what do you do? All right, well, what is the best option? You know, TSA lock, sure. I mean, it's not the go-to in most situations, but if you wanna be able to just quickly check a bag, all right, it's kind of secure, maybe not. Sure, I understand that, I get it. Now, again, is this a good lock? No, by, by no definition is this a good lock. As we've already established, like TSA keys are out there on the internet. Anybody can get them, even if you don't know the combination. Let's lock this up. Okay, we're all locked up. You've seen this video on my channel. I can easily pop this off. However, if you do want a TSA capable lock and you don't want to deal with every one of those little padlocks is a piece of garbage. Sometimes, you're aware, right? The TSA doesn't even want to spend the time to, to get the master key. They'll just chop it off. So you wind up losing your padlocks anyway at the destination. There is another option though, however. These latches on Pelican case. Who among you, if you follow the uh, Pelican world and stuff, have you ever seen Pelican is now shipping cases with locks integrated in them? And they're not great, right? They're TSA locks, because again, that's the lion's share of the market. That case that you can buy from, from Pelican with the TSA lock, it's pretty expensive. It's too expensive, honestly. And if you're a big Pelican head, right, you've already got plenty of these cases. And you're like, oh, fuck me, I don't want to cycle out all my cases. Well, thankfully, somebody in uh, the overseas regions just happens to be manufacturing these hasps, right? They've got these clasps, they got these latches. They look exactly like the ones Pelican is now using on their new gear. My assumption is that somebody is just kicking product out the back door of a factory. So how do these work? Well, they look a lot like the Storm case. Uh, Pelican acquired Storm case long ago, but they actually are the push button to release style. So you've got a little locking element on the back here, that little claw. And you can push the button if it's unlocked, if it is locked, however, well, you know, it's a little blocking bar. I mean, you can see this is really, really rudimentary right here. There you go. You can just see there's a blocking element that just swings over. Is that clear? You can see it's just a hunk of plastic, unlocked, locked. And when it's locked, I can't push this down. So is this a good lock? You know, it's not great, I'm not gonna lie. But is it an option for you? Yes. And because you can buy the pair of these, they're on Amazon right now for as long as that remains legal, I guess. It's pretty trivial to swap your latch out and just do a replacement. You don't have to replace your whole case. So how do we do this? Well, just bash on those pins. For those who've never replaced, like I've had broken latches before. Um, if you've never replaced these pins, they just bang right out the side. They do have threading on one side to, to make them actually stay a little bit, stay put. So here's the best way to think about that. Get yourself a striking tool. I, I love my little hammerless hinge pin tool here for door attacks, but you can do this with, you know, a nail and a hammer. Go ahead and line up and try bashing on those pins. If it's not coming very, very judiciously right away, you're probably on the wrong side. 
Let's try it from the other side and see what kind of performance we get. Bam, see that coming right out? That is what you want to see. I might even be able to knock it completely through. There we go. So with that out, you can see the threaded side, which even had some uh, rubber residue, plastic residue on there, because the threads just kind of grip into the plastic. It's a pretty simple switch. There we go. This one completely off. We've got our new one. Just kind of line it up. We've got the hole. You can kind of feel it. All right. Looks like it's kind of in the right spot. Drive it home. And there you go. Now you have, and it's also, it's kind of nice. These actually are a little more robust because they won't pop at all unless you engage the, uh, the thumb button right there. So I kind of dig on that myself. If you need a cheap and easy way to secure your Pelican cases, again, in my world, alloy locks are the best, but you can go TSA compliant. And do, as I say, do they, do they work with TSA keys? Yeah, you know, a TSA key will still operate this. It's a little, it's a little janky sometimes. So now we're, now we're locked, all right. And so the way this works, if you're not familiar, the actual key is just occupying more space in the keyway. So I'll show it to you a little better on camera here. So the official key, and it's, you know, P, these are not, you know, unique keys, let's be clear. P001 is also just a very common luggage key. So that'll occupy just about the whole keyway. If I'm using the TSA key, you can almost see there are, there are different parts of alignment. There are different parts of the wafers that will get hit when this key aligns a little differently in the keyway. Look at the curve of this one. It's straight up and down just about. The TSA key is cocked off to one side. It's, again, it's not easy to see that on the camera here, which means it's a little more fiddly to get in the keyway, but it will work. And what is the upside for you? Well, it means you can lock your luggage, and if the TSA has to get in there, they can use their key and only their key. It's not like they can just be like, hey, Hank, fetch the bolt cutters, because th there's nothing they can do. There's nothing for them to cut. So if you do have situations where you're prepared to use a TSA lock on, you know, low value items, instead of buying one of these that'll fall off, break easily, and who the hell knows what else, maybe, maybe consider upgrading your Pelican case. As long as Amazon and some other sellers have these, well, we'll see. You don't have to buy a brand new case from Pelican to get them. Stay safe out there. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. As most of you are aware, uh, I'm not a pro at this whole YouTubery thing. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have, uh, you know, I don't care if you subscribe or if you share this or if you buzz chat it or whatever the kids today do. But what I do have is a lot of free stuff that we keep in ye old uh, Pelican case of prize goodies here. So what uh, what is this what is this about? Well, I have things that I've been given over the years, or have bought, or found, or you know picked up at a, a trade show booth, and they're sitting around. They're there's something I would like to throw out, but they're too nice to throw out. So what do I do with them? Well, I'm going to give them to one of you. Uh, and as I'm talking, I should be uh, rummaging around in this. Uh, Oh, oh, here we go. Okay. So from SHOT Show, I don't know which booth had these or why, but this was uh, it's probably some armament company. What does the head stamp say on here? I can't even... Some some Israeli... I am, is this IMI? Really? Wow. All right. So so IMI was giving away... Is this 9 mil? It's supposed to be 9 mil. Who knows? But IMI was giving away... Uh, these little things, I think they were keychains, but, you know, if you wanted to be extra tactical, you could use them as earrings? I mean, after all, there are there are two of them. So, earrings, cufflinks, uh, you name it. Get yourself in trouble with the TSA by forgetting they were in your bag. So, if you would like one of these, or in fact both of these, because I'm only going to send out one envelope as usual... What you do is down uh, down in the comments section, you kind of sound off with the magic word of the week, and it's always something that uh, we in, you know enjoy putting in our face holes. Uh, well, we got two of these. Let's go with a plural word. Um, ah, tomatoes. 
I'm Italian. Uh, we grow tomatoes in our backyard. We use them for a lot of things. Uh, if you can spell the word tomatoes and you can leave a regular comment or just a joke comment or, or just the word by itself, but we'll do that randomizer internet script thing and I will pick one of you and then I'll reply to you probably down in the same comments because I'm not uh, a pro at this stuff. But if we manage to connect on that internet, get me a mailing address. I don't care. Anywhere in the world, I'll get some ITAR violation for sending uh, you know, bullets that aren't really bullets. But they can be yours. So yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.